G'day, I'm Steve. G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass, and welcome to my workshop. And I hope you've been following along. This is episode five of a six part series on making a hexagonal box with a marquetry inlaid leaf. At the end of episode 4B, because it was such a long episode, I had to put it into two parts. We had actually inlaid the leaf into an oval and then put that oval into the top of the box top. And now I've just taken this out of the press and as you can see it's inlaid there quite nicely. Now I've got to take the sticky tape off the front. A nice sharp knife, maybe a cabinet scraper and I'll just pop it into my vise. By the way a lot of people have asked me what this tail vise is. It's actually an H&T Gordon tail vise so if you look that up on the website there. Talk to Terry and I'm sure he'll look after you. A little hint when you're using sticky tape, try not to leave it in the press for too long. I've left this maybe a little bit too long and it's starting to get a bit tacky. So if you can take it off once it's out of the press, it does save you a lot of time, but it's not a disaster. It's easy enough to fix. Got a lot of it off, I'll give it a go with the scraper now. As you can see, the scraper is getting it off pretty effectively. If you want to know how to sharpen one of these, I've done a video. Either check it out on woodworkingmasterclass.com.au in the free membership area, or it's also on YouTube. Hold it up to the light and see if there's any tape Reflecting, I think we've got it all. Okay, next step, we'll glue it onto the top of the box. Hexagonal box, really you don't have um, much choices. You can pick which side you want, it's the front, but basically a hexagonal box has equal sides. But if you've got a real scrungy bit and you don't like the look of it, I would put that to the back. And again, I'll use PVA on this. Could just as easily use high glue but this is a little bit quicker. Pick up the top, place it on the top of your box. Just make sure that the edges here line up with the points on the hexagon. That looks pretty darn good. Pop it on there. Pop that back on top and a nice big heavy weight on the top of it and I'll leave that for about half an hour to set. Okay, got the box out of the clamp, all the heavy weights and the top's glued on nice and tight. Now what I'm going to do is put it into the vise and just sand these edges flat so I know that there's no bits of glue or any bits of overhang because what I want to do is go over to the table saw and then cut the rebates in the top to accept the solid edging we're going to cut a little bit later on. At this stage I'm using a sanding block just an ordinary cork sanding block with a piece of 100 grit sandpaper. I've shown you before but it's a great idea if you get these sanding blocks and put a little bit of ply on one side. I've got a video on YouTube of how to do it and that way you've got a soft surface of cork and a hard one. For this job, I'm going to use the hard surface because I want it dead flat and true. Put your paper on, pinch it on the side of the block, stretch it, roll it over, and that eliminates any belly in the cork block itself. Well, it stops your paper from ripping, basically. Pop it in the vise and just go over 
the outside and the sides to make sure it's all nice and flat. And there we have it. Run your fingers over it. That's the best way, just run your hands over it and your hands will pick up if there's anything you've missed. If this little edge is protruding a little bit or there's a little bit of glue in the corner that you've missed, hands and touch are the best way to go. Next thing is I'm gonna set the table saw up so I can put in the solid edging. I've already pre-machined some solid edging out of Queensland Walnut and it's just over 10 mils, about 11 mil square. So I'll set the saw depth at about nine and a half to 10 mil, which will accept the solid edging and give me a little bit of overhang that I can machine off at a later stage. Well, I've been over to the saw, I've cut the top off and I've stuffed it. And I know this is woodworking masterclass, but it's not woodworking for someone who never makes mistakes and is perfect every time, because believe me, I'm not. But I thought I've put so much work into this leaf here I'm not going to throw the box away and I thought well I don't know perhaps you might make a mistake one day and this will help you out of a situation. So what I've decided to do I've cut this too deep and I've got a kickback on the saw there because momentary lacks for concentration which is not good but I've decided I'm going to go ahead with it anyway and it's still going to look fantastic. What I've decided to do because I've cut this too deep as you can see in there what I'm going to do is build that up. But I'm gonna make a feature out of it. When I used to have a work, uh, woodworking school, I used to tell all my students, you never make mistakes, you create an opportunity to have a feature. And that's what I'm gonna do here. So what I've got is some white timber, this is silver ash, and two different colors of veneer. That's uh, myrtle and that's jarrett. You can use any colors you like. But what I'm gonna do is have a layer of jarrah and then another layer of jarrah and then a layer of myrtle and that'll bring my depth up so when I put this on top there's not going to be a gap but it's going to be a gentle progression into the solid edging at the top and this bit at the bottom where I had a kickback yeah it was disappointing but I've worked out how I can fix that, so towards the end you'll even see that. Because why do you want to waste so much energy and creativity because you made a slight stuff up? You just change your design on the trot, that's what all good woodworkers do. And as I said, I'm forever making mistakes, so I guess that's why I learn a lot of things. So here we go. I'll just glue these strips on, get some paper. Actually if I use the the width of this ruler, it's slightly wider than the timber I'm using, so that should be fine. The other reason for this is, you know I'm doing this live, I'm not cutting out all the bits that didn't work. And the sad thing is, I can't blame Bob for this because he's not even in the shed. And a couple of pieces of myrtle. That's the underside there. <laughs> can't cut things with a pencil. I'm having a shocking day. And again, I'm, I'm using high glue on this because if I use PVA, you get something called creep, which... If you've ever done a job, go back a month, two months, a year later and rub your hands over it and you will feel a little glue line coming up. Whereas I know with high glue, it crystallizes when it dries and there's no glue line. And because I want this to be all one piece with the side, I don't want to have any creep. on there put this in the vise over here okay while we're waiting for that to dry I'll show you how to make a little 
mitre box, very similar to the ones you buy for, for corners from the hardware shop, only this is to cut the solid edging so you get 60 degree joints. All you need is a couple of bits of scrap and another bit of scrap. Now I'm actually going to pre-drill these because I don't want to split this timber. Just bang it into place somewhere. <clears throat> By the way, little trick with nails. If you want them to go in easy, if you're rubbing through your hair like that, the grease in your hair um, somehow acts as a lubricant and they go in a lot easier. Nail those two bits in there. Get the edging that you've got. Put the timber up against it. Hold it fairly firmly. Drill a couple of pilot holes. Don't drill them near the end that you're going to pair it on. I'm left-handed so I'm keeping the right hand place free. Alright now grab a protractor or um, a 30-60 triangle or a sliding bevel that you can set the degrees on and set it at 60 degrees. Now on these, uh, yeah they're accurate but they're not that accurate. So what I do is I actually put it up against the box lid itself and check the angle and then I know it's going to fit the box. Then put it against your jig and with a marking knife. Now I'm left handed so that means I'm going to use a Japanese saw to cut this and I will cut this way. If you're right handed you might want to swing it around the other way and you'd feel more comfortable cutting from this side. So for me and all you other lefties out there I'll do it this way. Then just with your knife Mark down there, and also on the end, put a mark in there. Now with that going to be like that, I think I might even put a nail either side to hold these parts in place. So when I cut, this one's not going to move on me. What you can do if you want to get a precise cut on this, is give it a slightly deeper score with your knife. And then get a nice sharp chisel. And this is the edge that you want. So on the other edge, if you just gouge a very fine little V out of there. What that'll do, it'll give you a good start for your saw. Now I cut all the way through and do exactly the same to this end here. Next, and I don't know if you've made one of these, but I've spoken about often I'll put together a little video on how to make them. They're bench hooks. Very, very simple to make. Basically a piece of plywood with two bits of 2B1 either side, mate. Hook over your bench as easy as that. That goes on there. Pick up a piece of sticking. Make sure you've got it the right way up. And then just... Gently saw it through. If you want to clean it up, you take it out of that cut, reverse it, put it into here. Again, a nice sharp chisel. You can just pair that off nicely. And then once you've paired it, move it up to your box, get it right on the angle there. Mark the other angle with your knife, get a little planer. I actually like to cut these just a little bit fat and that way I can clean it up when I pair it. It's a good idea just to check, it's being hexagonal they should all be the same size. So what you can do then if it's a little bit oversized, that's okay, you can use it as a template. So you put a new bit in there, put this over the top, make sure it's square on this end, cut the next one. It's 
So I'll cut another nine of these, which will give me the top and the base, by which time the uh, feature that we're working on will be dry, and I'll cut that in exactly the same way, and then we can build that up, a bit like a rainbow cake, but it's going to look okay. Well, that's been in the press long enough. We'll take it out with the box. If we lay that along there, well, it's going to look all right, but still a bit dark. So what I'm going to do is I think I'll get another piece of white veneer and lay it over that jarrah. That'll give us a better contrast and break it up. And I'll do the same for the bottom piece. I'll lay a piece of veneer along, just one piece, along what we're doing here. Grab some white veneer. What I'm going to do is laminate this all up in one go. So I make sure that it's a bit wider than what I need. I'm actually going to sandwich these all together. So that's another piece of stock that I've machined up. I'll glue it onto there and have that bit of silver ash in between what we've already glued together and the top piece. And these two bits of sticking I've already cut to lay in the bottom. So I'll use those as well and just glue those together like so. I realise this is a little extra work, but it isn't as much work as starting that box from scratch and doing the inlay. I know it's a risk me going and saying I've made a mistake because I haven't seen any videos of woodworking where they actually fess up to it, but hey, if I can help someone else stop getting frustrated, that's my job done and I'm happy with that. And uh, if there's any purists watching, I'm really sorry, but I am fallible. I'm going to use hide glue. That's what I've been using all along on, on this glue up. The temptation there for me at this point of time is to use a quick drying PVA. But I know down the track I'm going to regret doing that. So we might as well do it properly from the get-go. There we go. And back into the vise. Now we have that all clamped up. When they come out of the clamps, we're back to square one and we can continue on the journey of making this box. Well, I had a little bit of a change of heart. I took these uh, laminated strips out of the press and planed it up, as you can see. Got quite a nice bit of contrast happening there. And I've decided, again, thinking on the trot, instead of having the dark timber in the top, I'm going to have the lighter timber on the top. And I've started to put these segments in. So we're starting to rescue the box. And I couldn't use this jig I made before because this is a little bit wider. So what I've done, I've made a much simpler jig even, and I'm just going to use this end for pairing off. So what I do is line it up, put a little mark, draw a line, rough cut it, pop it in the little miter box, and then pair back the line that I drew. Put it onto the box. And the last one. With this one, you've just got to creep up on it so you get it right in there. From the brink of disaster, we're clawing our way back to something that's going to be quite acceptable. And I'll do exactly the same on the bottom with this solid edging. And I'll have the white part up against the box like that.
Well, there we go. One box safe from the scrap heap, hopefully. And that brings us to the end of this episode. So what we'll be doing next week is taking all this tape off, planing this flat, putting a nice round over on it. I'll show you how to take the lid off, how to do the lining on the inside, and also I'll be doing some flocking. And flocking is, it used to be very, very popular. It sort of declined a little bit now, but it's actually a textile lining that's done in powder form. I'll show you how to do that. And then might even have time to make a stand and the box will be finished to finish it any way you like. So until then, this is Steve pulling the shed door down on another project and saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Enjoy your woodwork. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.